woke up super early to drive down this big dirt road. We've made our way down to Tampa, Florida to go check out the Big Cat Reserve today. You can hear the cats like over the wall. This was just over two hours of drive time from Orlando to get here. And we're gonna go check in. You can see the prices for your tours. So the tour ran us about 39 bucks a person. And we do have all three of us today. And before we go to check in, you can see this guy hanging out. There's another one back there. Oh my god, he's gorgeous. We did get here almost an hour early. We just wanted to make sure we left time for traffic. The workers are out cleaning cages and feeding the animals. You can get an early feeding tour here too to go out and watch these guys feed the animals. Wildcats don't belong in cages. Look at that tiger. Why are you whispering? Andy! Mm -hmm. Hate to oh, fly! Another, so it's good that we got here early because we are going out a little bit early. And they give you this little box to tell you about the cats as you go along. The tour lasts about 90 minutes. Looking. I'm, and, you know, you're all talking and I'm looking, I'm looking for cats because some of them, some of them are shy, they'll hide in their dens. So if I'm walking and you say, hey, I see someone, just stop me, we'll stop, we'll play their story. So we're going to walk this way. This guy's name is Andy. Um, oh, when everyone funny. else gets up closer here, I'll play his story. But you can walk up to the wall. Just don't lean over because if your if your uh, phone drops or your camera drops, it'll stay there to the end of the show. Wow. Okay. Okay. Humane Society, and when they have newborn kittens, they come here. We have interns that live on the property while they're going to college, uh, learning about animal husbandry. Each one will be assigned to kittens, and they're here during the day while the interns are working. And then when they go back to their resident housing at night, the kittens go with them and they care for them there, and sometimes the mother if we have. This is Mary Ann, and that's Max. Uh, they didn't come here together, so I'm going to play their story and then I'll explain you how they got together. And since we don't breed, if you see cats together, they've been both fixed. <laughs> oh, 
Up to either side because they can spray up to like eight feet. <laughs> Don't let the tigers back up to you. You can hear this one lion across the way. Wow. Here's a snack. What she just made is what we call chuffing. And in the wild, when they come across another tiger and they chuffle one another, then they know that they're comfortable with that particular tiger. We don't have a story on her because she was uh, confiscated by the USDA from a horrible facility, brought here for safekeeping. So we, we, don't, we don't know anything about her. Look at those. Bang. She's showing what she's doing right now, we call it, huh? well, some people call it stinky face. But what she's doing is she's taking in all of our aroma, whether you've got makeup on or perfume or hair product. And that's what they do in the wild. Um, they have a spot at the roof of their mouth that's an extra sensory, and that's how they take in all the smells. So if someone comes in with a, a like a C&I dog on the property, these guys are smelling it right when we get out the door. She's a big girl, and I was told by...
brave school. Hmm. Yeah, but that's what he used to look like. It was beautiful. Um, and if you see her teeth, she's got a lot of dental problems because A, she's a white tiger. Her mouth doesn't, her lips doesn't cover her mouth like it should. She is cross-eyed. Most of the white tigers are cross-eyed. They try to get a perfect white tiger by crossbreeding and inbreeding to get perfect black stripes. So she would be considered a throwaway tiger because if they're brown, maybe one in a, I don't know how many might get black. But she would never be born in the wild. If by chance, by nature, an albino tiger was born, the mother would kill it right away because the mother would know that she can't protect herself. She would die in the wild. He's a picky eater, so they'll come out in the morning, mid-morning, afternoon, mid-afternoon, and at night before the keepers go home to try to get him to eat. People try to breed these animals together sometimes, so the tiger and a lion, and you get a liger. charge a fence if we get close. That's why we consider her off the floor path. Um, they were pulled from their mother at two weeks old from New Jersey, shipped off to a place in Texas to a good sanctuary, photo lot. So we leave her alone. This, where did he go? Oh, there he is. So we're gonna walk along this way. Uh, Hoover's our international tiger. Uh, I'll play his story for you. Cats, they take turns, and it's about two and a half acres. Hoover. Mm -hmm. Did Zabu and Cameron come out together? Yes. The Texas Tigers also come out together. Why did you get him over here this time? I didn't watch it. I think he may have gone to the transport. I'm not sure if he walked through the tunnel or not. Yeah, they may have brought him through the tunnel. But every two weeks, the big cats rotate out here? Yes. For how long? For two weeks. Two weeks every, oh yeah. wow. It kind of gives them the sense that they're in the wild. Um, hey, who? So it's got a lake. There's a lake there. There's a den there. And uh, his story is really interesting. I'm going to play it for you. Yes. I would love to send that to Janie. Go right ahead, you do. system that we have throughout the property. We have it for the big cats and we have it for the smaller cats. And so all the big cats have this attachment close to their enclosure. We lock everything down with the snaps, with the actual locks, and we coax them through with meat to get out there. And sometimes they don't want to come home, so it might take a day or two. <laughs> <laughs> Last time he was out, it took him three days to finally decide, you know, I think I'm going to go home now. <laughs> so all the big cats have a ball like this. And even that, that, that used to be a uh, big time And they're indestructible. Um, if you were here years ago, we had a Siberian tiger by the name of Shere Khan. Mm. He weighed 750 pounds. This was his toy until they took it away. You see, he put a hole in that, and it used to be smooth. And um, he used to pick this up in his mouth and carry it around and throw it in the air in his enclosure. <laughs> um, so what we try to tell folks is, 
we're against owning tigers as pets or any big cats as pets because this is what they do to their indestructible toys and we try to stress upon the people that it just doesn't make sense mm -hmm. because like you now will kill you in a second they're wild animals maybe she'll grace us with her presence mm -hmm. well, hard to tell mm -hmm. yeah um she came she has a very sad beginning uh, on the play her story mm -hmm. very sad so high and then it's got the incline and it's all hot water. And so is Nikita, yeah. So, but they are beautiful. Different philosophies. Sanctuaries believe that conservation can only be in their native countries because that's where they're born. That's where they live. Um, and he feel like by breeding, they're conserving. So we're not so sure about that. We don't agree with that. But, Latest. Man, hey, bud. Hi. Hey, handsome. Let me play his story for you. Don't worry, next year you'll beat Tom Brady. More distinct. Um, when they kill, they don't kill by the juggler their prey. They kill from the top and they puncture the prey's brain and it's over. The leopards will go for the juggler and uh, that's a difference on how they, on how they kill each other. Probably. <laughs> then I'll talk about, I'll play Maya's song. And um, we'll play his story for you. He's a Savannah cat. But did any particular like turkey, like Cameron loves turkey. Meat, just whatever just they Just whatever's fresh right, in meat. So yeah. That's a black jaguar tail. Oh, 
and then they can jump up 10 feet up in the air with their prey. Mm -hmm. Turn his tail around oh. and yeah. she can probably right spray him. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Thank so, you. So that's hot. <laughs> <You> spray both. <laughs> <laughs> feel like it's almost like they're in prison because they belong in the wild. The tigers will roam about 15 miles a day, the lions about 18 miles a day. So unfortunately for them, fortunately they're in a good home, but they don't really belong here. There are more tigers in Texas and Florida than there are all in the wild, and that's not good. That's really bad. So we've got this bill in Congress that um, for every call someone makes, it's as if 100 uh, signatures on a petition. And if the law passes, and we actually have bipartisan support right now, um, we're only a few hundred away from getting to our goal. And if it passes and we think it's gonna pass, then we'll be gone 20 years from now. And that means that it was a success. That means that you're not going to find a breeder anymore that's breeding little baby cub tigers for photo ops and then let you buy one for 10, 15 grand and try to keep it in your backyard. So I'm going to play the end speech. <laughs> so we are wrapping here. Um, the tour went a little bit longer than 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. I longer. thought it was great. Yeah, um, there's a lot of walking. Um, the tour guide was great, but the tour guide gives you kind of color. There are the earbuds that you put in with pre-recorded messages, so that's why there's so much video here with um, no corresponding like narration to it. You can't really talk over everything because you need to be quiet. It's kind of like a library almost, like the tour group that goes out. And there were about 20 people in our tour group. Um, the one thing that we kind of bantered around about when we did walk around was, you know, the difference of um, a lot of these wild cats being uh, kept in such small enclosures and they acknowledge at the end of the tour that they feel guilty having these wild cats in the enclosures as well but the alternative is those cats just dying because they don't know how to act in the wild um, all of these cats are rescued from somewhere else they're either from like zoos or petting zoos or places where they thought that they could control the cats when they were smaller or circus type things and or people own them yeah, where people thought that they could, um, you know, actually domesticate wild animals themselves. So, what do you think? I, I thought it was great. Yeah. I loved it. I wanted to hug every animal in there, but <laughs> yeah. you're not allowed to. <laughs> yeah, we would come home without you. I know. <laughs> what did you think? It was okay. It was okay. Jess is really torn about the fact that um, the animals are in smaller cages. Although, at the end of the tour, where we showed you that one small cage, that's the U.S. law right now that if you wanted to keep a big cat like a lion, you can literally keep that cat or these these breeders or bigger places or zoos and stuff can keep those cats in that tiny little box, which is ridiculous. 20. Yeah, so the flyer that we showed at the end, if you guys wanted to help out at all, you could call up if you're in the US yeah, to uh, right. propose uh, to, that you're supporting the bill, to stop um, any of this like any breeding ownership. and ownership um, of, wild animals. of wild animals altogether. So in any event, 
This is about uh, two plus hours out of Orlando. A lot of fun. I love seeing the cats. It's, it's incredible to always kind of keep in the back of your mind the size of your cats compared to their cats. Oh, it's crazy. And, um, anyway, thanks for coming along. Thank you very much for all of your likes and your comments and your subscriptions. <laughs> Treat others the way you want to be treated. <laughs> Have a great night. We'll see you guys.